Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Today I'm sharing with you the absolute best technique for shaping your lips, making them look better, and just making them the star of your face. So if you're interested in hearing that, please keep watching. If you're not already subscribed, I would love to have you. The subscribe button's in one of these corners. I can never remember which. And if you do find this video helpful or enjoyable to watch, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. But enough jibber jabber let's get into the video so let's begin to start you should already have your base on and ideally some sort of lip balm that's been on while you're doing the rest of your makeup to help moisturize and prep your lips for lipstick and lip liner the tools you'll be needing is some sort of contour powder this is depending on your skin tone and what undertone you feel like looks best and most natural on you for me i'm going to be using this kevin aquan this is the contour duo just because i find this cool tone shade works really well with my lighter skin tone and it doesn't end up looking too muddy or warm which is very important because we're trying to create a shadow and you don't want to look like you have like bronzer on your mouth you definitely want it to be a neutral or a cooler tone shade next up you'll need two to three different lip liners different depths but similar tones or shades the three i'll be using today is lime crime topis which i believe is discontinued it's one of my favorites so your lightest one should be a similar match to your natural lip tone so this is my closest match and this is also a cooler tone shade and then you're going to want a medium tone this one is also cooler toned it's charlotte tilbury's iconic nude and then you're going to want your deepest shade this is one from house of sillage i will go ahead and put the shade name below but this is my deepest cool toned contour lip liner so i'd recommend for at least one of your lip liner choices to be cooler toned or as cool toned as you feel like you can go while still looking natural because this is going to create the shadow of our lip shape and definition so all of mine do have a cool tone to them i feel like that looks actually more natural on me than warm tones but again depending on your skin tone you might have to adjust the shades and see what works best kind of just play around and see what looks the most natural on you and then of course we'll be needing lipstick ideally two shades one that is a just a regular lipstick shade which is the charlotte tilbury one in nude romance i'll be using today and then you want a very light lipstick shade for your skin tone this is bare pout from flower beauty which is almost this very white pale pink kim kw from charlotte tilbury that's another example of just a very light lipstick and again the lipstick shade should be adjusted to your skin undertone and what you feel like looks best on you and then lastly you'll need a lip gloss this is optional you can do a matte lip or you can add a gloss this one is from bite beauty unfortunately bite beauty is going out of business but i believe they still have this in stock on their website for 50 percent off if you did want to grab it i really love this lip gloss it's the shade sugar drizzle which is a clear with a gold reflect or glitter in it and I also love a lot of their other lip products, but let's go ahead and get started on this lip tutorial. Since I have lip balm on, I'm going to take a tissue and blot off all of the extra moisture. You don't want anything too slippery on your lips before we start this. We're going to start with the contour powder. Now you can use a cream for this step as well. It's up to you. I'm going to be using a powder one today, the one I mentioned from Kevin Aquan. And the brush we'll be using is an Artiste brush. I forget the number of it, but it's this round little brush, almost looks like a little baby toothbrush brush and it is pretty densely packed so i'm going to be dipping in to the contour shade of course getting my brush pretty coated but i am going to make sure that the excess product is removed from the brush because we want to start very light here so the goal of this step is to create a shadow around your lips to make your lips appear bigger because if they were bigger they would create more of a shadow around your mouth so i'm going to take this and start to sort of buff it in around my mouth and repeating that same step on my lower lip and where my lip starts to hit my skin i do a little bit extra shading right there this will be covered up with some lip liner but we want that point to be the darkest and the same goes for the upper lip the closer to the lip line the darker the shading can be if you feel like you have too much product at any point you could just take a brush this one doesn't have any product on it and i just tap this into my foundation if you already have powder on be very careful as to not to swipe because that will pick up your makeup make sure you are 
just dabbing. So we don't want it to be super dramatic at first. We can always go back in when we're done with the lip, but you can just tell that I have a wider shadow around my mouth and it does look a little bit weird when you first put it on. But once we start laying the lip liners, everything will start to come together. So I went ahead and swatched the lip liners to kind of explain the reasons why I'm using the three different ones. So starting over here, this is the Lime Crime Topaz, which is my lightest shade. In the middle is the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. And then over here is the House of Sillage, very cool toned taupey brown shade. So usually when we do lip liner, we'll just do a lip liner and a lipstick. And that can create a flat effect, even though our lips are not flat. When we incorporate more shading into the lips or any part of your makeup, it's going to make things pop more. It's going to make things fall back more, AKA your lips. We're going to try to make them come forward and we're making the shadow around the mouth darker to help that sink back a little bit into the face. Not literally, but we're creating the illusion that this is happening. So I'm going to start with the lightest shade, which is the Lime Crime Topaz. I'm starting with the lightest shade because I just draw back on my art experience, which I really don't have a lot. Literally just high school art class. You never start with your deepest, darkest shadows. You start with a light, lightish, medium shade and start shading. And then you build upon those darks and then you add highlights at the end. So we're kind of using that similar concept. And you wanna make sure your lip liners are sharp as well. Mine is not, so we're gonna go ahead and sharpen it. Starting with this, I'm just going to create the guideline of the lip shape that I want to create. And I recommend almost a more waxy type of lip liner. It depends on your your preference but I find that these stay a lot longer and if we're using something too creamy it can be a little bit too easy to blend and everything might just like blend together into one shade which we don't want we want to create smooth shading and definition but we don't want everything to mix together all these formulas I have today are really nice a little bit more stiff which personally I like and we will be overlining the lip today but I like to start on the bottom lip start in the center and then I do not overline the corners of my mouth too widely and I'll explain that a little bit later on on the video but we will just start creating our lip shade here and then move on. You also want to make sure that your lips are in a relaxed natural position when you're doing your lip liner so it's easy to create a shape that looks good when your lips are naturally kind of just chilling out. How much you overline and where you overline will heavily depend on your lip shape. For me my lips are like very small and they're just small in general. Like they're small on my face, but they're also small here and they have more volume in the middle of them and not towards the outer edge. So I do not round out my edges because it gives me a very droopy, just weird looking shaped lip. So I focus most of my overlining actually just in the center of my upper lip. I find this looks the most natural. It's kind of where I just need it and it evens out because my top lip is also smaller than my bottom lip. Now moving on to our second deepest shade, which is the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. We'll be basically repeating this same process, but we're gonna put it right above that shade and we're gonna use this a little bit more heavy handed. We're gonna start to really shade in the lips and you'll see what I'm talking about when I start applying it. So there's our application of the iconic nude shade. I actually don't start putting a lot of product in the inner corner of my mouth, outer corner of my mouth until I get to the shade because I don't want it to be too dark again because of my lip shape. I wanna try to keep things perky and not very like sad and pouty. And then on to the deepest shade of lip liner, the House of Sillage one. This is where you wanna be a little bit more precise. The Charlotte Tilbury shade was to blend in sort of that uh, medium lime crime shade that we used. And now this is going to be actually the outest most corner of our lips. I know it may seem a little bit weird to do a line on the outer lips start going inwards and then go back out. But now we have this gradient and we can put this darker shade in and kind of get a better feel of how it's going to look as the end result. Because if you just went in with this at first, it may seem too dark, but now we can see and really just start to create the lip shape. It's very hard to explain, but it's easier to create more of the shape that you want because it's easier to see what it will look like. Basically, it's what I said. So I like to start again in the bottom 
in the center area of my lip and then work my way outwards. I'm also shading the outer corner of my lips with this darkest shade to create more of a plump pouty effect in the center of my lips. So what's really cool about these lip liners is they do have a blending brush on the other end. So I'm going to use this brush to blend it into the other shades and into my skin because it's right on that edge. At this point, I like to really relax my lips and sort of see if anything's uneven or if I need to sharpen anything up. So I'm definitely going to sharpen up the corners and this side's looking like a little bit uneven. So I just have a flat brush. This is a Luxie flat definer brush. I use this all the time and it just has a little bit of a powder foundation on it. And I just take that to the outer corner of my lip and basically like move it upwards because my lip shape does just tend to downturn a little bit, especially when I'm doing lip liner. So I wanna make sure I correct that so I have like a happy lip. Now that I feel like everything is relatively even, I'm actually going to go back in with the Kevin Aquan contour shade on a fluffier brush. And now that I know exactly where my lip line is stopping, I'm going to add just a tiny bit more shadow just on the bottom lip. Alrighty, almost done. Now on to lipstick, starting with the deeper shaded lipstick we have. Today I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Nude Romance, which is a very pretty peachy shade. And I like to blot this on. We're not going to swipe it. We don't want that much pigment or product quite yet. And I am putting this everywhere besides the very outer corner of the lip. So at this point, we're basically done with the shading and the gradation of our lip. So we created the very darkest point, which is the House of Silage lip liner. And we created a gradient to make it look a little bit more natural using the other lip liners and this lipstick. Now to create the highlight, this is going to pull your lips out. This is going to make it seem like there's a spotlight on a certain point of your face. It's the furthest thing out from your face that's going to catch light. So it's going to make your lips look bigger when we add highlights. So for that, I'm using the Flower Beauty lipstick I mentioned earlier. And this is a very light baby pink. And with this, we're only going to put it on the very center of the lips. I'm also dabbing this. I don't want too much product. And I almost do it in a heart shape, just right on the cupid's bow. And then for this, I actually usually take my finger and blend it in. And now you can finish everything off with a gloss, but only put this in the center of your lips as well. So I'll be taking the Bite Beauty one. And I like how this has like a, I think it's like a plastic tip and you could just wipe it off so that the color doesn't remain on the wand, which is really important because we don't want to muddy or mix any of these like darker shades with the rest that we have on. And then I just take this and tap it on the very center points. And that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to look in the mirror. I sometimes even take a picture with my back camera with my lips relaxed and see if anything's uneven or if it needs to be shaped a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So this is kind of a weird picture, but uh, yeah, I just relax my face and look at the lips and they look very even and evenly shaded to me. Another trick is to also put the picture into black and white. This will help you if you feel like you're getting distracted by the colors to see more of the shading and see I have more depth in the corners and the very outer line of my lip and I cleaned up the edges so I don't have like a frowny lip. So if that seems helpful to you, definitely try it out. But this is it for our contoured lip. You could of course overline even more than this. And this is not an everyday technique. Although you could do this pretty quickly once you get a hang of it. But it's definitely for those days you want a little bit more oomph. If you really want to spend the time shaping the lips. I truly hope you found this helpful to watch. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you do, it really helps me out. And if you're new here and aren't already subscribed, I would love to have you. The subscribe button is in one of these corners. I don't know which one, I always forget. But hit subscribe, join the family, and thank you again for watching, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.